Oh, hey. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I'm a little bit late today by about, what, 10, 15, 20 seconds. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Lemon Live at Five show. I appreciate it. Coming to you from, you can see my little mic stand here, coming to you from my very own living room. I appreciate you guys joining us. I know it's a little bit unorthodox to be doing a show like this. I think it's great because I get to relate to you guys. So um, you can tell I kind of, kind of a little bit down in spirit, not because of me, but because of what happened at the courtroom today, at the courthouse. I don't know if you guys saw it. I'm sure you've seen the video because it's been everywhere. Um, this guy set himself on fire. And it's, I can't imagine anyone being in that amount of pain or being dealing with anything like that. It's just really, really terrible. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that because that is the danger, really, of people, uh, of conspiracy theories. Because it appears that this guy was a conspiracy theorist. Um, he had some issues. Very bright individual, by the way. If you read his manifesto, we have read his manifesto, and we're going to share some of it with you. Um, but tell me if, if you, it was hard for me to watch the video. I have to be honest with you. I tweeted it out on social media, and then I thought better about it. And I said, I don't want to show someone who is in pain like that. I don't want to do that. So uh, I took it down. And I apologize to all of you on social media who, you know, who may have seen it. I took it down. I didn't show it. I didn't show it. I didn't show it. I, let's just pray for that man, for his family, and for the people out there. We're going to dig into that a little bit more. This happened at the same court, or near the courthouse, I should say, where Donald Trump's trial is going on. and. Um, it, it supposedly happened like there were still there were witnesses or jurors, I should say, who were leaving the courtroom. They were leaving the courtroom at the time and they may have seen some of this. How will that affect them? How will that affect them? Also, some of the jurors in the trial are concerned about their safety and they're concerned about their mental well-being, not only their physical well-being, but their mental well-being. One of them even crying today. We're going to talk about why, why they're crying. Why are people worried about their safety? Why, why are journalists writing all of this information about them and really just piling it on? <laughs> okay. Are y'all listening to me? Call everybody and tell them that I'm going to be talking about this next story. It's a little weird. And you know, as a journalist, I would not say something that I did not have a source for. As a matter of fact, we used to say, you know, we, oh, we not we used to say, we do say second source. I need more than one source. And if you can get me three, that's great. So I now have two credible sources <laughs> who said that there was a, a, an odor going on around the former president in court. Because not only was he, did, was he falling asleep again today, Apparently, did you guys hear? He was farting. <laughs> he was tooting. Putin. What else do you call it? I, I, I'm not kidding you. My friend and attorney over at the Midas Touch Network, Ben Mycellus, he's heard it. He has reported it. And also... Prominent lawyer, the former husband of Kellyanne Conway, George Conway, is saying the same thing. <laughs> Sorry. Even my dogs are laughing. Can you believe it? Donald Trump was allegedly, reportedly, farting and sleeping. Now, look. Everybody is. <laughs> Everybody farts in their sleep. Ask any doctor if you're married. You sleep with Everybody farts in their sleep. So, uh, that is our breaking. Oh, I forgot my board. Where's my board? Crap. I forgot my breaking news board. What am I going to do without it? So I need my breaking news board. The breaking news, <laughs> the breaking wind 
today <laughs> is, is Donald Trump allegedly <laughs> farting a court. <laughs> you cannot make this shit up. Seriously. Okay, we all needed a little humor, a little levity today because it's been such a rough week. So that really helped the week, right? That really helped the week. And by the way, a little it's Friday, a little cocktail. If you have one, let me know. Or if you're in a place where you can have one, obviously if you're not driving, have yourself a little cocktail. Tell your friends to come join us. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up for us and make sure you subscribe. Tell your friends, tell everyone to subscribe. This is my... <laughs> Yesterday was breaking news. This is my. Breaking news. Except I got to. Oh, where's the eraser? I got to change it. The eraser is, is still there. I can use this little eraser. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How do I do a little cloud? Breaking wind today. That's our breaking news. Uh, we have some more. <laughs> I know I've lost my mind. Hey, it's Friday. We all need to laugh. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Come on, have some fun. Have some fun. Everything is so serious. We've gone from rockets uh, to from Israel, uh, from Iran into Israel. We've gone from uh, a jurors being docs and saying, you know, p- people finding out. We have... I can't even remember everything that we've dealt with today. And then we have a man on fire. It's been really, really, really tough. Uh, And we have a a former president who is sitting for the first time for a criminal trial. And we have the mess that's going on in Congress and the breaking wind. (laughs) (laughs) Ow! Okay. So here, let me get to Congress real quick. So in Congress, apparently this sort of four-pronged deal uh, that is going to provide aid to uh, Ukraine. It's going to give help to um, to Israel. Um, it's going to give help to Taiwan. There's also uh, uh, TikTok is tied in, in into that as well. And apparently, Mike Johnson. It is by there is bipartisan momentum. Hallelujah. Let's <laughs> bipartisan momentum finally on Capitol Hill. Because Mike Johnson has helped to push through Friday a foreign aid package for $95 billion for Ukraine, Israel, Tyron, humanitarian support as a robust coalition of lawmakers helped to clear a procedural hurdle to reach final votes this weekend. But his own people, his own people, Matt, oh, my God, I'm going to get to the comments. I'm just letting the comments stack up and build. Make sure you guys, please, subscribe and make sure... Uh, you give us a thumbs up because it helps us with the algorithm and it helps uh, bring people, more people into our community. So we have had, what a week, World War III, question mark, right? Was it World War III? I don't know. I kept saying, listen, World War III, the Trump jury fury, chaos at Columbia University, and then free speech battle with NPR. Oh, that all happened. But I have been saying, what else can happen? What else can happen in this world? It is. This is a crazy news time. Is there like, I don't know, revelations or something going on? Or is, are these end times? <laughs> I just looked at one of the comments and said, you're fired. <laughs> you know where the fire was coming from. Come on now. I'll take some fart jokes. Why not? Putin. Uh, what do you call? Oh, Putin, Putin. Well, what would you call it? Everybody had like Don Snorleone. Um, oh, wait. Oh, Lord. Sleepy and stinky Trump. G- give me a nickname. <laughs> Sorry. OK. All right. Here we go. OK, so listen, I'm going to get to let's talk about the man on fire. Right. And I want to get that out of the way. And I want to say again that this is these are really tough times for a lot of people. This man was susceptible, obviously, to a lot of rhetoric, a lot of conspiracy theories. Um, And you know where those conspiracy theories come from most of the time. Now, they come from online. They come from social media. I'm going to read to you about them, and then I'm going to go to your comments. Um, Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Have you, the question is, have you hit the thumbs up button? Have you hit the thumbs up button? Did you hit the thumbs up? You know it. 77% said yes. 23% say no. 23% I'm mad at y'all. Y'all better hit the thumbs up button. Okay, so here we go as we talk about um, what happened with the man in the courtroom, and then I'll get back to the other stuff. 
So the horrific breaking news is coming out of Manhattan this evening, just minutes after a full slate, 12 jurors who were picked, six alternates uh, were impaneled in the former President Donald Trump's New York hush money trial. A man set himself on fire, and it's called Collect Pond Park. It's right across the street from the courthouse. We know the man's name. They gave a press conference right after that, right after it happened. The press conference was from Max Azzarello. He's a 37-year-old Floridian. They call it, when you, do, when you do something like that, when you set yourself on fire, it is called self-immolation. Self-immolation. If you've never, if you've, have you ever heard of that? It's called self-immolation. People, um, you've seen people do it. I used to see people doing it a lot more during the sort of the 60s, um, you know, during the Vietnam War, when there were protests or whatever. This is something that is very unusual. So if you haven't seen the video already, I have to warn you, it is really hard to watch. It's harrowing. Um, I was going to show it to you, but I'm not going to. I have, you know, I feel, I feel a certain kind of way about it. In the moment, I can understand, I can understand why the news media showed it. And that's because it's all happening, it's breaking, and you don't really have a, you're just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening and reporting. And by the way, my former colleague, Laura Coates, is out there reporting on it. I mean, just giving a, you know, direct, hey, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. And I think that was the best way to do it, but I don't, I don't think that they should have showed it uh, after I thought better about it. Can we do a poll? Should the media have shown, should they have showed, is it shown? Should they have shown the video of the man on fire? Should they show or have shown it? Should they show the video of the man on fire? That's my question. Should they show the video of the man on fire? Um, because he he's still alive as of this, the last time I checked. They said he was in bad shape because they wheeled him out. Um, they said it was in bad shape. In order to do something like that, you got to be going through some things. And we don't show in the media suicides, never. It's always been our policy since I was like a baby in the news business that you don't show suicides. And this was clearly an attempt that you set yourself on fire. You're clearly um, trying to, to off yourself. So, I, I, you know, I have to warn you that the video is hard to watch. If you want to see it, it's online. I had, I had tweeted it, but, not, you know, I, I, I took it down. This is according to the New York Times. An eyewitness who declined to be identified said a man, they, he threw pamphlets in the air, before he doused himself with an accelerant, and then he lit himself on fire. Some of the pamphlets reference anti-government conspiracy theories. There, were, there was another eyewitness who described the young man's body as totally charred, and they said that there were reports that the jurors may have been leaving the courthouse. Now imagine if that was you, because people said that they could smell the burning flesh of this man. Consider if you were on this jury, if you were on this jury, wouldn't that weigh on you? Wouldn't that weigh on everyone involved in the trial, especially if there were jurors who were leaving the courthouse at the time? Consider the effects that it had on, listen, the journalists, I, 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 okay, it had an effect on the journalists, I get that. That's their job, though. Our, our jobs as journalists is to cover things, good or bad, horrific or whatever. So you, listen, I know it affects people. But um, they were just five, maybe a few feet away just doing their live shots. But imagine if you were a juror and you had been in the courtroom, you've seen all the drama, and you know that one of the jurors, the judge dismissed because people figured out who she was. She was being harassed, or you know, not harassed, but people were asking her about it. She was worried about being harassed. She was worried about her personal safety. And there are others who are also worried about their personal safety as well. By the way, I would not be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if more juries, jur more jurors, excuse me, more jurors dropped out. Because if you see someone who comes up and they, you know, set themselves on fire in front of the courthouse, immediately you think, oh my gosh, this is Donald Trump related. The story writes itself, right? The story writes itself. You have a sort of middle-aged white guy from Florida. People think like, whoa, 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 what is this? What is this? Obviously, they think he is a Donald Trump supporter. Everyone starts speculating and asking, would this have to do anything to do with the, with the former president? Well, apparently, as of now, it did not, except for the conspiracy theory part, because we know that the MAGA folks and the pre and you know all they believe in these conspiracy theories. By the way, the whole idea that the 20 
2020 election was stolen is a conspiracy theory because it didn't happen. It's not true. You know, the whole QAnon crowd or what have you. But apparently this didn't have anything to do with the former president as of now. Okay, so in the courtroom, the judge expressed a concern. But let me tell you about this. They obtained his manifesto online, be- belonging to this man, a manifesto online. He, he, he appears that it wasn't motivated by anti-Trump sentiment. Instead, he wanted to bring attention to himself. And he knew where the cameras were. I've been telling you guys that this is Donald Trump couldn't pay for this media. It's earned media. Free. He gets to go in front of every single camera that's, you know, news camera, pretty much that's trained every single news organization. And so when he comes out, that's a reason that's a reason that he comes out with his notes is a reason that he comes out of court um, with, you know, and, and, and gives these little impromptu news briefings, briefings, because he knows that he can't pay for this. He couldn't pay for this. So he wanted to use the trial to bring attention to himself. But he believes and I, and, and I quote here, totalitarian con, he calls it a totalitarian con being carried out by the Bush family, by the Clintons, by tech billionaire Peter Thiel, by the creators of the TV show, The Simpsons. Clearly, he was not well. I'm going to talk about what that means for Monday's proceedings, but clearly he was not well. I have been telling you guys as I told Elon Musk in that interview, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been in this business since 1991, 1992 as a journalist. I didn't see the proliferation of this sort of conspiracy theory minded person until the advent of the internet and the proliferation of social media. And that is why I question Elon Musk about his responsibility to moderate a platform because it only takes one person and people go online and it's, there's so many conspiracy theories. And if you have the opportunity to tamp that down, why wouldn't you? That has nothing to do with free speech. You have freedom of speech, but every workplace, every platform has rules. So if you have, you have freedom of speech at your job, you can say whatever you want at your job, but you have to suffer the consequences. Your job says you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't say this. You can't do that in the workplace. You can't do certain things when you go into certain establishments and certain businesses. So you can't do certain things on certain platforms. That's not, that has nothing to do with freedom of speech. Organizations, platforms, people have rules because they're looking out for the greater good. So when I see things like this, he posted, by the way, his manifesto is posted where? On the internet, on social media. Where do people go and talk to, to, the, to each other about these things on the internet, on social media? Let's see what you guys have to say about this. Should the media show the video of the man on fire? 36% say yes, 64% say no. Interesting, interesting. I want to know why. I want to know why in the comments. Tell me, why do you think why do you think that they, the news media should or shouldn't support? So let's go to some of the comments and then we'll get back to the stories. Freedom of speech has consequences, says round two. Amen, I agree with that. I agree with that. Daniel Newman says Ponzi papers. That was it, it was the Ponzi papers. The manifesto, the Ponzi papers. Um, this, I wanted to read some, there was one that who, someone here who posted about crypto. Haya Truth Art says, I feel he was reaching out. Yeah, a cry for help. A cry for help. LJ says, crypto Ponzi schemes, Harvard. I don't know what that means. Sandy W says, I don't know. It seems very extreme to get attention when people blow milk out of their noses and get clicks. Yeah, but he was... He bought into the conspiracy theories. Do we know his identity? Yeah, I gave you his identity um, at the beginning of the show. Butterfly Kisses Healing says, those images haunt us later. You cannot unsee it once it is etched in your mind. Yeah. Daryl May says, it shows people real life facts. Daryl, 
I respect your opinion, but if you hear somebody set themselves on fire, I think those are the facts. And the reason I do it is because of copycats. Someone in here said copycats. Simon Lester, Simon Lester says copycats, and I agree. That's one reason that we didn't, we don't show suicides and certain things on the news. It's because of copycats. Maxwell Finder says those who want to see the video can easily find it online. Right? Can easily find it online. The Knitting Tour says it's so terrible to see how people can be manipulated into thinking things that are so off base. It is truly tragic. I hope he gets the care he needs. I do too. I hope he survives. I just had a very weird thought. And I think you guys know what I'm thinking. If you saw that video, that man is not in good shape and he's never going to be in good shape. I'm sure he has fourth, third, fourth degree burns all over his body. That is painful. If anybody's ever been burned, if anyone has ever been to a burn unit, you know that is painful. That is painful, 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 painful. I just, would you want, apparently he didn't want to live. So if he didn't want to live and then he's going to have to live with this, I, just, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, James Jarmillo says, so we can see how important free mental health is. Yeah, it is. It is. And you know what? I, I like to take the the stigma off of mental health. And when I was uh, on CNN, I would, I would have these conversations with my former colleague, Chris Cuomo. We would talk about mental health when we did our handoff and the importance of taking stigma off of, of mental health because it's no different than any other ailment that you have. And if you have an ailment, whether it's mental health, physical health, or whatever it is, you should get treatment for it. So I, I'm very transparent about it. I'm very transparent about having um, suffered from depression. I'm very transparent about um, taking antidepressants. I even talked about it again in my conversation with Elon Musk. He does ketamine. I've tried drug-guided therapy before. It actually worked. It was a breakthrough. So I think that people, we should take uh, the stigma off of mental health. And we should try to embrace people for that. Check up on your family and friends. I agree, M. Sog, Muzi. I agree. It's been a very tough week and it's a very tough time. So 63% uh, of you say the news media shouldn't show it. 37% say yes. Thank you very much. Make sure you hit the, um, the thumbs up. Have you smashed that thumbs up yet? And also the uh, like, hit the like button. Thank you for supporting. I really appreciate you guys supporting independent media. So let me just shout some folks out here if I can get my computer to work properly. Oh my God, I've lost you guys. I don't know how to get you back. Um, anyway, I can't find my uh, little notes. So I can't ask you questions. I know that my producers are gonna say, go to the shared file. Oh, here it is, okay. So, um, I want to thank some of the people who support independent media. And that is Sweeting, Sweet Indigo, Sweet Indigo 45, Marcy AK Leopard Lady, Dominic, Dominic Malfara, Kylie Karma, Still Alive, and JT Douglas. Thank you very much. And I also, you know what, who else I want to thank? I want to thank all the folks at the Mighty Midas Touch Network because you guys are fantastic. I really, really, really appreciate you guys, what you do. You're amazing. So thank you so much, so much, so much for, um, for joining us here on the network. I got to get rid of photo booth. I'm in photo booth and I'm thinking that I'm talking to you guys and I'm not. And so I can't see my things. So anyway, have a sip. We're going to bring the energy up in this and talk about uh, other things, including the farting. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, the jurors 
are upset by it. I get it. I get that the jurors are upset by it. And, and, and I, you know, I, I don't want to really talk about this self-immolation uh, that much more. So here's what I'm going to do. This is what else is happening in the courtroom. Okay, so we'll move on from that. This the, the, the Sandoval hearings are still going on. They were designed to let the defendants know that the scope of questions that they could face from prosecutors on cross-examination. So they could be informed of decisions about whether to take the witness stand uh, in their own defense. So we know that if Donald J. Trump takes a stand in the criminal trial, prosecutors want to cross-examine him about his recent lawsuits, um, that he's lost as a tax that he's made on women and judges, opinion that he's um, sworn statements in civil case, range from, quote, hollow to untrue. So they're going to want to know all of that. They're going, they're going to want to know what happened with E. Jean Carroll. What did you do? Right? And I'm sure some of these jurors aren't going to want to be on this case. One of my notes talks about what happened with um, one of the jurors. Let's see. Let's see if I can find exactly what the juror said. The juror said... Okay, so here's what the juror, there's a juror who's really, really, really upset. Um, so but this happened before this man set himself on fire. Uh, that multiple jurors, today multiple potential jurors, were dismissed after citing extreme anxiety about being associated with the story case. Two people even started crying that they were so concerned about it. Two people even started crying. One of them, a young woman, broke down under questioning from the prosecutor, sobbing, she reportedly said, I feel so nervous and anxious right now. I'm so sorry. I wouldn't want someone who feels this way to judge my case either. This is a quote from her. I don't want to waste the court's time. I don't want to waste anyone's time. And after conferring with the defense team and prosecutors, Judge Merchan dismissed this woman. Okay. I want to reiterate that the prospective juror broke down before the guy set himself on fire. This is really going to haunt this case, I think. And I, do you think? At this point, with the weight and the gravity of this trial finally really dawning on everyone, I know I asked you guys this earlier, but do you think that you would still, do you think that you would still want to serve on this jury with all of this going on? I know you guys, I said, hey, if I was, you know, I was kind of joking saying if I was picked to be on the Donald Trump uh, case trial, I would tell everybody. But at this point, I'm not sure if I wouldn't want to be on this jury. It's too much. It's too much. You don't know what people are going to do. You don't know what kind of copycats there are out there. You, you just don't know. I mean, as I, I hate to keep talking about January 6th, but if, if people can be so upset that they storm the Capitol, that they beat police officers, that they break the windows, that they go into people's offices and steal their belongings and memorabilia. If they leave feces and they did in the Capitol, if they beat police officers with flagpoles, and I know there's this whole thing out there where people say there were no weapons. That's not true. There were weapons. Talk to a police officer who was there. Go do, go look online at credible news sources and they will list all of the weapons that were there. It doesn't have to, doesn't have to be a gun to be a weapon. We, we know this, right? Remember nunchucks? Right? Knives. All kind, a flagpole is a weapon when you're using it against someone, when you're using it to beat someone. So all of those things for me would cross my mind because I lived through January 6th. I was not there. I reported through it. One of my dear friends, Michael Fanone, police officer, he suffered a, a heart attack. He was beaten. So I would be worried about the, the potential. I'm not saying that they're going to do it. I'm not saying that. But history should be a lesson to us. Not to repeat it. And if it has happened where people have been violent, Bear spray. Thank you. I just happened to look over and, and Sand Corn said bear spray. Absolutely. That is a weapon. Officer Dunn. He can tell you. Thank you. Someone put that in there. Thank you. I appreciate it. So I, I would be concerned because these people don't have personal security. They aren't trained police officers in defending themselves. They have families that they want to go home to and they want to spend time with children. It's crazy. 
It's crazy. So one of the jurors was dismissed because she was so concerned about that. Okay. So I just wonder if the jurors are going to be able to focus on the prosecution after all this. Okay. So let's, can we talk about it? Let's talk about this now. I'm going to get to the really, really, really good stuff. <laughs> and that is Don Snorleone <laughs> doing his thing. Okay. So these are lighter developments. Airy, you, I don't know, poof. E, smelly, windy. <laughs> Breaking wind developments in this case. Come on, y'all. Let's talk about it. Do you have some nicknames for me? Do you guys have some nicknames for me? Let's talk about it. This is not the Windy City, but I guess it is. Chicago, don't be mad today because New York City is the... <laughs> <laughs> New York City is the windy city today. New York City is the windy city. Could you guys imagine you fall asleep? <laughs> so the lighter developments, Trump fell asleep yet again. That's according to reporters in the courtroom. But there's more. Wait, wait, there's more. Okay. Ben Micellis. Uh, my, my dear friend, co-founder of the Midas Touch Network. I love you guys over there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Reported today that Donald Trump is actually farting in the court. <laughs> is actually farting in the courtroom. And that is, is, this is a quote. Donald Trump is actually farting in the courtroom and that it's very stinky <laughs> around him. What? La oh, wait, is someone in the comments said that? Who is it? Do we know? Jeff Stuff. Jeff Stuff, Jeff Stuff is the winner. Law and odor. <laughs> Law and odor. That is hilarious. Oh, you're the winner. You guys, come on. You guys have it. What is it? Uh, flatulence. I should say Donald Trump. If I was, so if I was on the traditional news media, I would be sitting at the, well, not me, you know. Uh, but and my, when I did the late show on CNN, I would just say, you know, he was farting or whatever. But when I would, like was a news anchor, I'd be like, good evening. There are reports that the former president was flatulating in court. There was flat, flatulence in the courtroom in New York. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. Breaking bad win okay let's see let's see okay let me read it and i'll, I'll read your comments so um um again i wouldn't be reporting on this you know unless i had a couple of sources to confirm i've got two i've got ben myself and i have george conley husband of kelly and kelly remember kelly and kelly was the one who helped trump get um elected she was his campaign manager so you know i'm just saying i'm just saying now imagine being in a courtroom and this dude is, you're stuck in there, right? Because the judge is like, you got to sit, you sit in here, you can't leave until he said, okay. They say, all rise, a jury dismissed. Jury walks out, judge, all rise. And then, boom, you can't, you can't go anywhere. So I wonder if people were like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I would be trying, I don't know if they could get it through, but I'd be bringing some air fresh. <laughs> I'd be bringing my Glade in the courtroom on Monday. Okay, let's go to the, let's go. It's Friday. It's Friday. If someone asked if I was going to be singing, it's Friday. Yes. So Tulsa Kalpin, yes, law and odor is hilarious. Um, we heard how he stinks for years, said Debbie, Ho De Debbie Hagen. Um. Simon Lester says, breaking cheese, <laughs> breaking cheese. Elise Dial says, ripper in chief. Easily distracted said, we all know it was bowel movement. Oh, gross. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have read. That is disgusting. Not disgusting. That is disgusting. Um, the flatulating fascist. Okay. Odor in the court. <laughs> who is Who is that? Odor in the court is one. Whoever said odor in the court, boom. Law and odor, odor in the court. That is really, really, really good. Vix, 
I, easily distracted said I would be putting some Vicks vapor rub. I don't know that, you know, I had my grandmother, my mom used to always put Vicks vapor rub on me as a kid when I love it too, especially even now when I'm sick, but that stuff. Odor in the court. Oh, that's, that is Corso, I think, but anyone said fire. Maybe they were responding. Odor in the court. Uh, Lysol. You cannot bring Lysol in there. The big orange funk. No wonder the AC is so low. I wouldn't be able to hold back from laughing. Some people say. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Michael Kai Johnson. You're awesome, Michael. You know what Michael said? Do you know what Donald Trump's book's name is? What the name of Donald Trump's book? You guys know what it is? Do you guys remember what it is? It's called The Art of the Deal. <laughs> Michael Kai Johnson says, The Shart of the Deal. <laughs> <laughs> the chart of the deal. That is hilarious. Oh my gosh. I know I'm having too much fun. I'm having way too much fun, but you know, Hey, hit the thumbs up. If you're having fun, I can, I'm not going to say that word. Um, uh, fart of the deal. Fart of the deal is good too. Fart of the deal is really, really good. That is really good. Uh, gas toast and dog. Yes. So um, do you guys remember? And listen, I'm not just this isn't just coming out of nowhere. OK, let me tell you why. Because do you remember that report a couple months ago about Donald Trump smelling? Allegedly. Adam Kinzinger, Adam Kinzinger served this country. He's also a congressman. He's also uh, he's still a Republican, um, but he is I guess you can call him a never Trumper now. He's actually considering, he said, if his, if his party continues to go down the road that they're going on, by the way, you can watch our interview. If you go look on YouTube, it's in there. I think it's called elder abuse. Um, he says Donald Trump smells. And he was, he had some very vivid um, words about how Donald Trump smelled. He said it was, I forget the exact term. Somebody look it up and tell me what the exact terms that Adam Kinzinger said. Uh, what is going on in that painting in your background on your left? Oh, uh, <laughs> it's a painting from a friend. A friend, I'll tell you what it is. Should I tell him what it is? Okay, it's Geneva Ellis. Geneva Ellis is, um, is an, an African-American uh, artist of color. And um, she is, I don't know if you can still call her an emerging artist, but she's a beautiful painter. And so it's like, it's three, four women. And they're just, I think they're dancing and having a good time is what it is. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little pre preview of it. So there it is. Anyways, there you go. Thank you for asking. See, I'm, I'm letting you guys into, into my home. Okay, uh, he's actually a nasty person on the inside, and now it's coming out. And that's what Christine Herrera says. I love the fart of the deal. Okay, so Geneva Ellis is awesome. You guys, oh, Ibki, you know Geneva Ellis? Geneva Ellis is amazing, so thank you very much. Um, Tam Jules... Oh, Tam, there it is. Tam says, said, Trump, Trump's gag the court order. <laughs> you guys are crazy. Uh, I love art. I do, too. I have, I have so much art. So, look, I like to, um, luckily, I have a lot of friends who are artists. And I am fortunate <clears throat> enough to be able to acquire some of their stuff because they help me out. Because I don't know if I would be able to afford it if I didn't know them. Because some of these people are really great artists who are up and coming. And usually, you know, I find them when they're up and coming. And then they get so big um, that I couldn't afford their art. But usually I, you know, I kind of get in early because I have such great. One of my dear friends, you see his book right here. See that? Is Rashid Johnson, who is an amazing artist. And so Rashid and I are friends. And I, I have been introduced to a lot of artists through Rashid. And so they helped me out. Anyway, I digress. So thank you. I know it's beautiful. Thank you very much. Okay. So I'm. Are you guys? Uh, are you guys done with talking about the um, pooter in chief, <laughs> the flatulator in chief? Huh? Okay. So listen. If you wanna, if you so if you wanna find out about what happened in court, what's happening, uh, what is going to happen, especially on Monday, because Monday is going to be the first day, right? Opening 
um, arguments, opening arguments, and closing statements. I think that's how it goes. Opening arguments and closing statements. If you guys want to know, make sure you tune into the, the show today. Um, Dina Dahl, who is from the Midas Touch Network, fantastic, fantastic uh, attorney and, and uh, legal contributor. And Ariva Martin, an amazing attorney and legal contributor. Uh, she, both, excuse me, both give their thoughts on what should happen in the courtroom or what will happen in the courtroom on Monday. And I think they kind of know. They said, here's, I, I think Ariva hit the nail on the head. You guys know who Hope Hicks was, right? Very close to the president. I think she, she was like his, his right-hand woman, right? I know people have like a body man, right? And so she was sort of uh, a body woman and she would do everything, nothing. There was nothing going on between, don't, don't think body like that, but it's just like his assistant close to him um, didn't do anything without her. And so that's what, that's what happened. So she was like his right hand, right? His right hand woman. And so Reva said that she believes that that would, that should be the first witness that Hope Hicks should be the first witness because she's extremely credible. Uh, I'm not saying that Michael Cohen is incredible. I know Michael. Uh, and so I'm not saying anything negative about Michael Cohen, but she believes that, that Hope Hicks has the most credibility out of the witnesses who are on the potential witness list that we know about. Okay. And she said that would be her first witness. And, and, and she has very interesting inside information. But the thing is, this is usually a courtesy when it comes to the courts, right? So the opposing side, no matter who it is, they will give you a preview to tell you who the potential witnesses are. These are potential witnesses. This is who we're going to bring on on Monday or Tuesday or the next day or whatever. Guess what? The prosecution is not doing that. And you know why they're not doing it? They're not doing it because they say Donald Trump has been intimidating witnesses, that he's been threatening witnesses, that he has been writing about them on social media, that they're afraid, they're concerned for these witnesses. So they're saying, nope, not going to do it. We're not going to tell you who the witnesses are. And I know Donald Trump and his t Donald Trump will say, oh, my God, see how unfairly I'm being treated. It, the court rules are that you do this. It's not a court rule. It's a courtesy. And so they don't have to do it. They don't have to do it if they feel that their client or their, or their witness, excuse me, their, their witness is being intimidated, if they're concerned. Would you do it? Do you think it's right for them to do it? I actually think it's right. I don't think that they should give them an idea of what witnesses are going to call. I don't think they should at all. And I know this is hard. I know the witnesses are going to be mad at me if they ever hear this and I'll never get an interview and then, you know, whatever. I think they should be sequestered. I really do. I think there's too much going on around this case. I think it's too dangerous. I think it's, you know, it's information can't get out there. They can't be pillow talk. Um, I, people should not be watching the news. Imagine. OK, so imagine if, if this if, imagine if this trial was going on right now. Right. Let's just say that everything was seated and there was where they were in the mi middle of the trial. This guy sets himself on fire in front of the courtroom. We're, they're not supposed to watch the news media, but, you know, I'm, I'm sure they do. And you have your TV on. Maybe you have your TV on and you're watching Law & Order. I watch Law & Order all the time, the original Law & Order. I love it. And you're watching Law & Order or you're watching The Bachelor or you're watching Shark Tank or whatever it is. And then someone breaks in. You can't hold break, breaking news. We interrupt this, this program to tell you that a man has set himself on fire in front of the courthouse. Or to show you what happened earlier today, you'd be like, oh, my gosh. You couldn't help but be influenced by that. You couldn't help but be influenced by that. So what do you think? Let me ask you. I'm going to ask you, should the jury be sequestered? That's what I want the next poll to be. Should the jury be sequestered? And make sure you hit the thumbs up button and make sure like and subscribe. Like, We're on a mission today. What do we need? Like 3,000 to get to our goal? We want it. No. We want it. We want it. We wanted 3,000, I'll say that, 3,000 subscribers to get to the goal that that my, I was going to say fiance, that my husband had in mind. He goes, yeah, he goes, I have a challenge for you. By the by Friday, I want you to have a, this certain amount, 120,000. And so we need like 3,000. So 
Get So call your friends, call your wife, hide your kids, hide your wife, call your friends, call everybody and tell them to subscribe. Tell them to subscribe. And the person who um, who gets the most people to subscribe, I don't know how you prove that. I'll send you a pizza. I'm kidding. I don't really know how you do that. Um, but if the folks over at the Midas Touch Network who come over and they, they, um, they're in the comments, if you guys would subscribe, I would really appreciate it. It would help. It would help. It would help. So um, let's see. Let's see what your comments are. Let's see what your comments are. And then I'll read what people say. And I think, should the jury be sequestered? So uh, Ben at Midas Touch just sent us an sent us and said, hello, Ben, I love you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And thank you for the breaking news. Ben, te ben texted me today and I said, Ben, can you come on the show? I want you to come in. Why don't you FaceTime me or call me during the live show? And he said um, he had some people who were out today and who weren't feeling well. So he was down some staff members, so he couldn't come on. But you know, he comes on whenever, whenever he can. And so uh, thank you for sharing that. And Ben, thank you. Thank you for the folks at the Mighty Midas Touch Network. Uh, tracks and relaxes coming over from Midas touch. Ben says, hi, hi, Ben. Hi guys. Hi, Midas touch Midas touch subscribe, subscribe. We would love it if you would subscribe and if you would hit the like button. So, um, we are asking Ben sent me says pumpkin says pumpkin vision. Darla leisure. Lesure says Ben sent us LOL. Um, skinny dog says, no, the media should not have shown the video of the man on fire. Okay, great. We, that was earlier. I agree. Wow. Look at all these comments come in. Ben sent me. That is so great. Thank you guys. We really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe. If Ben sent you over, hit the subscribe button and hit the like button and hit the up, the uh, thumbs up button. Let's see if I can get this thing to do this. So if he sent you, sent the, hit the thumbs up button. We really appreciate it. Whoop, whoop. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, Ben gave breaking news. Did he did he joke about my breaking news? Uh, Clemmy Shorts, David Tricker. Did he? I don't know. That's funny. Okay. Uh, Subscribe and like. Who is that? Sandra George. You're the best. I appreciate it. God's Country Homestead. Don! Exclamation uh, point. Andre Lagris said. Ben says. Yo yo back Ben. Seymour Sarah Bud says, done and done with the thumbs up and the subscribe. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So you guys haven't been here. You guys who are over at the Midas, all the folks have been here. So just, you know, just bear with us. Be patient because I want to show the folks from the Midas Touch Network what we have been doing because we were talking about Donald Trump farting in court. So we had, instead of breaking news, we had, <laughs> we had breaking wind. <laughs> That is my little, if you're listening on Spotify or on iHeart or on Apple, if you're listening, then um, I have a little uh, whiteboard that I have. I usually put breaking news because it's our little rudimentary graphics. It says breaking wind today. I wish we had a sound effect. <laughs> sound effect. Um, so, Elaine, you're right. I just saw you, Elaine. I don't know. You said Ben gets pizza. I am going to send Ben pizza. But you know what? I'm going to send Ben a really great gift. Should I tell what is happening? No. Okay. I'm not going to say. I'll let him share the news because I don't know if he's, I don't know if, um, you know, whatever. Uh, Vicky Wicked says, breaking win. I love it. The Midas, the mighty, the Midas mighty has arrived. Thank you, Midas, the mighty Midas. I appreciate it. Make you subscribe and like. Okay. So we're going to talk about other things. Richard, we talked about Donald Trump farting in court today. Ben was the first to report it. He reported it to me. He texted me and called, and, and we, we had a good laugh about it. So this one is called Johnson Triumphs, okay? Johnson Triumphs. There was rare bipartisan momentum on Capitol Hill today. The House pushed ahead Friday on a foreign aid package of $95 billion for Ukraine, for Israel, for Taiwan, and uh, Taiwan and humanitarian support as a robust coalition of lawmakers helped to clear a procedural hurdle to reach final votes this weekend, okay? Friday's vote produced a seldom seen outcome in the typically hyper-partisan House. Democrats helping Republicans, the Republican Speaker Mike Johnson plan um, advance overwhelmingly, his plan to advance overwhelmingly 316 to 94. 316 to 94. It is really an overwhelming victory. It is not an overwhelming victory. It was a victory for the for the strategy Johnson set in motion a week after he agonized 
for two months over this legislation. He went down to, to sort of kiss the ring this past weekend. I'm not sure if, what happened with that. But also, he was in danger of being ousted because Republicans don't do not like him compromising. They do not like him working with the with uh, the Democrats. You know why? Because they are under Donald Trump's thumb. They do everything he says. They are under. They are the MAGA uh, wing of the party. They are the extreme wing of the party. They are. By the way, if you're from Midas, some of our folks here are having a little cocktail. This is a little tequila on the rocks. How about that? Añejo on the rocks. What are you drinking if you're having a drink? It is Friday evening and we're having a little bit of fun here. Uh, Don, so glad you are here now. CNN did not deserve you. Oh, you're very sweet. I wish uh, I have nothing but love for my colleagues over at CNN. Okay. Um, Kadame says, and click alerts to remind you to get on the live. Yes, click alerts to remind you to get on a live. Are you telling me that or are you telling the, the the uh, folks here. Oh, how about SMC says Dozen Don the Tootin Trump. So the folks who came over from Midas Network, we were coming up, we have been coming up with nicknames for Donald Trump. And so the best one was the fart of the deal, the shart of the deal, odor in the court, and law and order, odor. <laughs> if you have some names, tell us. Oh, who smell it? One of my, my, this is what my mom drinks, except for the orange juice. Um, Smiling Two says, Smiling Two is having Tito's, cranberry, and orange juice. I'll have a little Tito's and cranberry. That's nice. Oh, Smelly Own. Don Smelly Own. I like that. Diaper Don for person. Wow. You know, I always hear people talk, talk about the current president and they use a similar term. This president, this former president is really, he, he, won't have, he won't be able to use any of those nicknames because he's taken them all. Hey, Don, how about a poll asking if you would serve on the Trump trial? I did that. Okay, so anyway, let's look at the poll that we have up now. Should the jury be sequestered? Here's the thing. Wow. 90% say yes, the jury should be sequestered. 10% say no, the jury should not be sequestered. I guess you guys understand the significance of this trial and you cannot mess around. You cannot mess around with that. Diaper Don for prison 2024. Don, you're great. Thank you, Vitalyn Green. I appreciate it. Odorous rump. <laughs> Too sweet for you says odorous rump. That is hilarious. Um, let's see. Call your friends. I don't know who said that. Uh, Putin, Putin lover, Putin, Putin lover. Oh, that's good. So I said yes yesterday to the jury being sequestered. Um, Trump, <laughs> Andy Backlund said Trump put the entire courtroom under a gag order. <laughs> you guys are amazing. So I, listen, it's we're, we're having you. You are farted like fire. Fired. Uh, listen, it's Friday. It's been a long week, and I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, yes, Jimmy Kimmel is going to roast him uh, tonight, Chrissy. Christy. I don't know if he's live on Friday, but he is going to roast him. There's going to be so many fart jokes. Um, I can't wait to see the late night shows, but it is Friday. It's been a very tough week. We've had a lot going on. Man, we had a man who set himself on fire outside of a courtroom. We deserve a little cocktail. We're all adults. If you're an adult and you're in a safe place where you're not driving or anything like that, A little tequila, añejo on the rocks. By the way, this is from an artist too, aren't these great? This is from an artist friend, listen to that. I love that sound, I love that sound. Um, ice pee pee, you guys are crazy. So um, cheers, cheers to you guys, thank you. Hiya Truth Art, cheers to you, thank you very much. SNL, get ready, oh my gosh, SNL is gonna be lit. SNL is going to be lit. Um, so is that real ice or is that cold stone? No, that's real ice. Um, it broke. I had a. I had one big, I like the big ice cube. That kind of melted, so I had to do a little freshener there. Nice glass. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I also want to thank Jim Jarrett. Thank you very much. I want to thank all of you who are supporting um, 
independent media. Thank you very much. And also the Midas, the mighty Midas community. Thank you so much for coming up or Midas mighty community. Thank you so much. Law and order. I had that one. Uh, Glennis Fitzpatrick said, will Don be on Mondays to Fridays only, or is it a weekend show as well? So here's the deal. I'm going to do it from uh, Monday to Friday. Um, I'm going to do it as long as you guys love me and you guys want me to do it. As long as there's interest and there's interest. Some days are, you know, more people tune in than others. And I know that you're busy, right? And the Midas guys always help us. So we appreciate that. Uh, It's going to be Monday through Friday, but I also am going to do a show because we have this huge trial coming up. And also because I think people need a bit of a breather and something fun. We're going to do something fun on Saturday and maybe Sunday. I know it's a little weird, but Tim and I said, why don't we do something? Maybe it's a little cheesy. Should we do like something where we're cooking or something or something with the dogs or um, having like making our favorite cocktail and have everybody sit down? Also, the folks at well, should I, should I say what the folks at YouTube said? The folks at YouTube said, maybe you should do something like wine and dine, like wine and dine. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so Jack's mom, at Jack's mom, Pat says, Hi, Don. Would love to hear your thoughts on RFK Jr. candidacy. Why is he running if he isn't in a position to win the presidency? And what side could be the recipient of his spoiler votes? I've heard thoughts on both sides of the argument. Thanks, appreciate your vote. Cheers, Pat. Okay. Um, He's not running. He's running on his own side. He's running on his own side. And he could be a spoiler for both candidates. But I actually think I actually think he might be a spoiler. I believe he might be a spoiler for Donald Trump. Because the because of the, the type of campaign that he's running, I think he's appealing more to the sort of Trump kind of voter. That's what I but listen, you can disagree with me. There are people who say he, he will probably take more, uh, he will probably hurt. Joe Biden, President Biden more. So that's what I think. I actually, in and, and full transparency, spoke to him on the phone, uh, trying, trying to get an interview with him. We're working that out. He is going to come on the show soon. We don't have a date yet, but I'll give you a story. So I was at, um, I went to a movie premiere with a friend a few years back at a hotel. And it was downstairs in in this hotel, the Whitby Hotel, in a screening room. And we watched, I forget what the movie was. It may have been a documentary or something like that. And so we were at the Whitby Hotel. And then afterwards, uh, I walked up to the restaurant to go eat. And I was about to sit down and there was this person said, hey, Don, hey, hey, I love love watching you, whatever. And it was, and I'm not trying to imitate his voice, but he was just whispering. So don't think that I'm like m- mimicking him because I know he has an issue with vocal cords. I was just saying, hey, hey, that's how I do. And so he, and so I went and it was him and Cheryl Hines, his wife and his son were all sitting at a table and we joined them for dinner. And this was years ago. This was probably around 2016 or 2017, um, maybe even before. It could have been 14 or 15. And we actually sat and we had a great conversation at a great dinner um, with Robert and Cheryl and their son. I forget their son's name again. I forget which one it is. I think it was the one who dated. Correct me if I'm wrong in the things. There was one who dated Taylor Swift. I think that may have been the, the young man. This a, anyway, very handsome, beautiful family. And it was I, I had a nice evening out with him. I had a really nice evening out with him. But that was years ago. I also, same thing. My mom and I went to a party out in Long Island a long a couple a few summers ago and it was a, like a big celebrity party that, that happens every summer and Oprah was there and you know a bunch of people and this was years ago and it was um Dr. Oz Dr. Oz was so nice to my mom gave her a ride on the golf cart took us to um show us to Bon Jovi's house. It was just, it's so great, so great. And then all of a sudden, he changed. And I feel something very similar about Robert Kennedy, and I want to talk to him about it, so I don't want to judge him before I talk to him. But um, it's fascinating how people evolve over time, how people evolve over time. I don't know what happens to certain people. I want to know why he says certain things, why he feels 
uh, a certain way about, uh, meaning um, Robert Kennedy, about vaccinations and so on and so forth. But do you know, Carrie Kennedy, who I also know, who has this great organization called Ripple of Hope that I attend every year. It's, it does great things. Um, and Carrie Kennedy came out with her entire family and said, my family supports, the Kennedy family supports President Joe Biden. I want to know how Robert feels about that. I really do. Thank you, Midas Mighty. Thank you, everyone. Um, I appreciate you joining us. Listen, it's six o'clock. I'm going to go a little bit over. I'm going to read the poll. Should the jury be sequestered? About 90% of you said the jury should be sequestered. So thank you for that. I'm going to end that poll. And then I want to say, I want to talk to you about the world and about war. So we thought that we were going to be in the middle of World War III, right? When we saw, listen, ever since October 7th, people have been wondering if we're going to be drawn into a broader war uh, in the region, in that region. And that's a legitimate concern and what that means for America and the world. And then, so far, the hostages are still not home with their families. That's very concerning. It's, the, the situation is broiling. It couldn't be hotter over there. And then you have Iran. Well, for, well then you have Israel, and they, they're, they're saying that they struck um, this Iranian consulate, and they killed two high-ranking Iranian uh, officials. And then Iran responded by sending rockets and drones, uh, missiles and drones, um, into Israel. We cannot have another, we cannot have a World War III. And people have to stop dying. Fortunately, nobody died from the Iranian attack. But we have to have cooler minds. We have to have officials who are, who can, how do you say this? We have to have officials who can stand up to the folks who are doing this, meaning Hamas, and who can speak to and have some credibility with Benjamin Netanyahu. Because we don't need a war. More people don't need to die. The Israeli people, the, the, they, don't need to die. they don't need more people dying. They had enough people die on October 7th. They've had enough heartache that happened on October 7th. And the Palestinian people, not Hamas, have had enough people die. It's, Gaza is, ba is basically demolished. Where do they go? Can you imagine being those folks? I know it's been a rough week for us. It's been tough. We've had, as I said, someone set himself on fire. We've got all these things going on. We've got things going on at Columbia and so on and so forth. But we are so fortunate to live in America where we can have freedom of speech, where we can erect tents on, on the quads, on the grounds of college campuses, where we can criticize our leaders, where we can criticize our country, where we can talk to each other and come to a consensus on issues, where we can disagree with each other without a war starting. We live in a democracy. It would be wonderful if the folks in the Middle East can do the same thing. The folks in, in Israel and Gaza can do the same thing. Israel obviously is a democ democracy, I know that. So let's um, give warm, kind thoughts to our friends who are over there, who live there, our Jewish brothers and sisters, our Palestinian brothers and sisters, and let's be grateful for where we live and let's keep our democracy intact. The next election is about democracy. You have a former president who has four court cases and 90 some charges against him, who says he's going to dismantle the democracy if he gets back in office. So I'm on the side of democracy. I'm not on the side of Republicans or Democrats. I'm on the side of democracy and I'm on the side of America. Let's keep America, America, so that, that we don't live under totalitarian rule. Okay? So with that said, have yourself a cocktail. Enjoy your weekend, hug your family and your loved ones, be safe and be grateful. I'll see you on Saturday and Sunday and beyond. Make sure you subscribe, you hit the thumbs up and the like.
okay? And let's build this community together. Have a fantastic weekend. Be safe. Love you guys.